ability to do that. Okay. So when we talk about the development of the Sharia, there are five main phases. Of course, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is the source for the Sharia. If people have questions, they come to him directly. Okay. Now, after he returns to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we have a second phase in which we have companions. Not every companion. Certain companions become experts in the Sharia, fuqaha, who are known to be able to explain what the Sharia is. Okay. Now, these companions, what do they do? They begin to now spread. Remember, they begin to move. They come to Egypt. They move to Iraq. They move to Afghanistan. They move to North Africa. They go to different areas. And as they go there, they begin to teach the Sharia to um, uh, 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 people, because of course Islam has now spread, and there's a there's a there's an urge, and there's a need, and there's a desire to understand what is it, what is this Sharia, what is this ethical moral system that has um, been revealed, okay. And so we begin to see the emergence of what we can call master jurists. That is to say. Particular jurists become famous in different areas. So, for example, in Kufa, Imam, Abi Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa is a master jurist. In Egypt, Imam Laith ibn Sa'd is a master jurist, and so on and so forth. In Damascus, Imam Al Zai is a master jurist. Okay? And so now, if you want to learn the Sharia, you've heard of these names of Imam Abu Hanifa and of Imam Laith. And so what do you do? You travel to Kufa, you travel to Egypt, you travel to Medina to study with Imam Malik ibn Anas, and so on and so forth. These master jurists, they now develop students, okay? And so now the students of Abu Hanifa, they begin to kind of uh, congregate, they gather in Kufa, in Iraq, right? The students of Malik in Medina. Uh, the students of Imam Laith in Egypt, and so on and so forth. So now, you know, if you want to learn the, learn about Abu Hanifa's Imam Abu Hanifa's teachings, you know that you ought to go to Iraq. You know, for Imam Laith's teachings, you ought to go to Egypt, and so on and so forth. Finally, we have the final phase of what, what I call transregional schools. What do we mean by transregional schools? Well, now, um, yes, the students of Imam Abu Hanifa they come to Iraq. But now they begin to, you know, let's say they live in Khurasan. They come to Iraq to study with the students of Imam Abu Hanifa. But what do they do? After a few years, they go back. And now the, the madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa begins to spread in Central Asia. Okay? And so on and so forth. So now we begin to see that the madhabs spread across different regions. Okay? These are some of the master jurists. Uh, I will share all of these slides uh, with everyone uh, after the, the, the lesson. Uh, so, so I might skip a few slides. Okay, so these are the master jurists. Okay. Um, so now what we begin to find is we find the formation of madhabs. Right? Again, what are these madhabs? These madhabs are the these are the paths that which, through which one has to travel, okay, in order to understand, um, in order to understand um, what is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, okay? What is the ethical and the moral will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 